Uh, Michael, as we welcome you back, there is always that question, what would Reagan do? And of course, in the mid-1980s, there were overtures to Iran in what was called the Iran-Contra affair. You look back at that situation and take a look at foreign policy today. Is it possible to reconcile the two? Really, we do not have a foreign policy today. Remember, this president, along with his Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, would not agree to a status of forces agreement, uh, which would certainly help what's going on today in Iraq. I tweeted over the weekend, J.D., I said, if I were a gold star mother, I would be marching on Washington, D.C. and saying, what the hell is going on? Why did my son, why did my daughter lose a limb or lose his life for this? Did you not see this coming at some point in time, whether it's the Bush administration or this administration? Didn't someone see this coming, and why did my child have to die? Uh, Michael, as you point this out, I, I think back through the mists of memory about your father as commander-in-chief, and to be certain, there were challenges in any administration, but psychologically, nationally, your dad sought to reassure people, sought to thank our military, not only in terms of budget allocation, sought to rebuild the United States military, but also to thank those who had returned from Vietnam, to talk about our all-volunteer services being an honorable pursuit. Michael, now, in 2014, in the wake of what we're seeing, in the wake of what you tweeted over the weekend, is there any way trust can be restored by this commander-in-chief, uh, given veterans and Gold Star mothers saying, what was this sacrifice No, for? I don't think so. I don't, th I don't think at this point in time that this, this president can build enough trust in those Gold Star mothers, in, in our friends around the world. I just came back from Normandy. I was in Normandy, France last week uh, for the 70th anniversary uh, celebration uh, if you will, of, of D-Day, uh, meeting with 93, 94, 95-year-old uh, members of the military who uplift my father, uplift real strong leadership, who are concerned about the leadership today not in the United States and in the world. You know, you talk about my father, but my father had a team around him. My father had people like Margaret Thatcher, Lech Valencia, Vakal Havel, Mikhail Gorbachev, Helmut Kohl, Pope John Paul. Right now in the world that we live in, there is a lack of that cadre of leaders in the world to stand up and say, what are you doing? What's going on? Stop this right now. There isn't that group as there was back in the late 1970s and all through the 1980s with my father. And that's what the world's missing. And the world is in turmoil because the world, not only the United States of America, the world lacks leadership. Michael, as you mentioned that, I, I guess we can, we can give this a name uh, since everyone tries to encapsulate these situations and, and portray crises and shortages, I guess we can call this ILD, International Leadership Deficit. It, it's worth asking, and I don't no, expect any of right. us to, I don't, I, I don't guess any of us have the answers, but has this been a change generationally, attitudinally, or just circumstantially in your mind? I think, I think the, the change that's going on is that we have people in Washington, D.C. who are not friends to the military, friends to America, blame America firsters, if you will. Isn't it interesting, if there is a leader in the world today, that leader is Vladimir Putin? Uh, I wrote about this months ago. That Vladimir Putin basically is the puppet master and everybody else is on the string that he has allowed them to, in fact, have. And so when, when, you have, when you have a country today that doesn't teach history, when you have a country today where nobody is cheerleading for America. My father died 10 years ago, you know, Jan, June 5th. And, and I said to a group that I was speaking to in Washington just the other night, he was a cheerleader for America. America right near, now needs a cheerleader, not somebody to point a finger at America and blame us. But America needs a cheerleader to feel good about itself. Nobody in America today feels good about itself and we have to start feeling good about america again we have every reason to feel good about ourselves but that takes leadership well Michael, you talked about the, the need for this uh, leadership and of optimism that your father you know embodied while he was in the white house now 
We hear it so much so quickly from conservatives and Republicans firing back against Barack Obama for failure of leadership and for bl and blaming the president for the situation that we are in today in Iraq here. Uh, we also heard Pat Buchanan, a Republican, a guy who worked in your dad's White House here on the program earlier today, saying that, you know, Republicans also need to let the dust settle here a little bit before they start casting blame. Now, would you, uh, maybe some of these Republicans, you want to see that optimism? Are they being too fast when they criticize the president right out of the gate like this? Well, somebody has to accept responsibility. You know, my father, let's go back to the original conversation. My father accepted responsibility for Iran-Contra. He went on TV and said he was sorry. Now, when I was doing radio, somebody asked me one day, what do you think is the biggest mistake your father made? I said, apologizing for Iran-Contra. But my father did apologize for it. Nobody's apologizing. Nobody in Washington, nobody in Washington, Democrat, Republican, Independent, I don't care. And you also Bernie don't Sanders, hear, you don't hear people saying we're going to reach across the aisle to, because there is a vested interest for all of the money and the lives lost and the blood spilled in Iraq that they, that they push back and find a solution here. That's right. I mean, it, and this is what, what's sad is nobody wants to work together towards a righteous ending, if you will. And, and my father had to bring Iran-Contra, you know, to an end. And what did he do? He apologized, went on TV and did that. Accepted responsibility. And you know what? The United States of America and her people accepted that. When you accept responsibility, we accept you. But nobody in Washington, nobody wants to accept responsibility for what is going on today. And as I said, if I lost my son, and I've met plenty of parents who have lost their sons and daughters in Fallujah, and there was an Al-Qaeda flag flying over a, a city or a town that my child lost their lives in, I would be super put out, and I would be marching on Washington, D.C. What about those parents? What about those families? What does it say to them? What, what did they go there for? What was the point of going into Iraq? And you know something? The Bush administration, a lot of people could have learned a lot from my father and how he handled Muammar Gaddafi. That was a righteous way to do it, quick, overnight, and Gaddafi kept his head down for 20 years. Mm. Michael Reagan, you made mention in passing of the current scene in Washington, and uh, it's worth noting the last time you were with us, our talk turned to what is happening within the conservative mo movement. And, and we're going to take a listen uh, to some of the words you said as you, with us here on Newsmax TV, said your dad today would face his toughest challenge from conservatives. Let's take a listen. And the reality of it is, if Ronald Reagan were to run today uh, in the United States of America, or even for governor of California, there's a good chance that there would be an argument about him becoming governor or president and would come from the right. It would not come from the left. Now, Michael, that's an interesting evaluation when we take a look back at history. And of course, your dad in 1976 led a conservative insurgency against a Republican president. So when we keep that in mind, is the debate between grassroots and establishment conservatives really such a bad, bad thing for the Republican Party? Well, a lot of things have changed in the last, you know, 30, 40 years. Uh, you have a lot more media, you have cable now, you have all the talk radio that's out there, and what have you. And everybody's got their own agenda. I mean, you got to admit that everybody has an agenda wherever they sit, whether it's talk radio or it's cable, whatever it might be. So it's much tougher to get through the, through the process, if, if you will. And the reason I said that was, as I, I was saying the other night to some friends, Ronald Reagan raised taxes as governor, signed an abortion bill as governor, no-fault divorce as governor, and my God, he was a union leader, the Screen Actors Guild. Now think about that person on stage in 2012 in the debate to be the nominee of the party. The fight would have come from the right, not from the left. And it's easy to define a liberal. Liberal is a liberal, but define a conservative. Well, there's the Tea Party conservatives, there's the, uh, gosh, there's social conservatives, there's economic conservatives. You go right to the list, and everybody's got their own agenda that they're trying to, in fact, sell. And what they've got to find is a way to come together. I said at Liberty University earlier this year, Ronald Reagan had a message of inclusion. Jerry Falwell and the Moral Majority reached out to Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan didn't reach out to the Moral Majority. He had a message that included everybody. And what the conservatives need to do is come together 
and the party, the RNC and the Republican Party, need to come together and find that message that's going to be inclusive, that's going to be pre bring people in, independents, Democrats, and what have you. And also, they need to start nominating candidates that are likable. People vote for people that they like. And let me tell you something. The reality is, in the last election, Barack Obama, as much as you disagree with his policies, was more likable than Mitt Romney. Interesting points you make, uh, Michael. We've got about a minute remaining, and we'd be remiss if we did not talk about uh, the news that came out Friday afternoon that the IRS just happened to lose so many of Lois Lerner's emails. With our minute remaining, what's your take on this continuing IRS scandal? Yeah, somebody ate my emails. Well, first of all, if the Congress of the United States really wanted to find those emails, uh, trust me, just just get the computers in and, and they can find the emails uh, if they want to dig deep enough. If this would have happened in my father's administration, a Bush administration, any Republican administration, the dominant media would be going absolutely crazy over this issue. But as always, the mainstream media hasn't found this story yet and I don't know if they'll ever find this story. People in, in the world cannot make a decision if they don't have the information. And right now, they don't have the information. Which is why it. we're not the media, we're Newsmax. And uh, we thank you very much, Michael Reagan, for your unique perspective of current events and history. It's always good to have Michael in. That's right, Michael made some good points there about his dad. Always good to get that take on where he would fit in in today's political conversation. We are coming back with more straight ahead on America's Forum.